Workplace bullying can significantly reduce productivity and create an unbearable work culture, which in turn will lead to a high turnover rate. As it turns out, bullies are not made at the workplace, but on the playground. The dynamics of bullying in the workplace are very similar to those of bullying in childhood and adolescence. It's about a power differential, and those who are doing the bullying somehow, in, in many different ways, acquire power over those whom they're trying to control or distress. Bullying is about power at its very core, and while power is usually a very good thing, it allows you to have control over your life and life circumstances. When it comes to bullying, power is always used in negative ways. Bullying has three components. Um, it has negative intent, so that there's it's aggressive behavior. Even if the person said it was just a joke, if it if it's experienced as aggressive behavior, uh, that's a feature of it. There's a power differential between the person who's doing the bullying and the person who's being victimized. And it's most often repeated over time because the power dynamic shifts over time and the person who's doing the bullying gains in power and the person who's being victimized loses in power in that relationship. Bullying can be hard to pinpoint, but the behavior does have certain patterns. Bullying is always systematic. It's really difficult beyond those three features to define bullying. And it's not just about the behavior because someone uh, may, may make a joke about your glasses. And for one individual, that doesn't make a difference. They couldn't care less about their glasses. And for another individual, it's terribly sensitive. Or somebody could make uh, a joke about your the smell of you, your food because it's different it's from a different culture and it wouldn't hurt the first time but once it it happens 20 or 30 or 40 times it it just is internalized in a way that's so hurtful and so distressing because it challenges your identity and your culture with the digital age bullying and the workplace has changed somewhat Bullying via social channels and even via email as the main means of communications at an office is becoming commonplace. Another element employers need to take into consideration. There's a new channel or a new medium for bullying through the internet. And what's fascinating is it's the same people who bully in traditional ways who also bully through the internet, and it's the same individuals who are victimized, which reinforces the notion of power in these relationships and the power dynamics in these, these relationships. The real difficulty with uh, the internet is that our brains, for one, aren't designed to interact through a non-visual means or a non-auditory means. We, When we interact, we see the person, we recognize their emotions, we can read their emotions or we can hear it in their voice. But when we're interacting with text, there are none of those cues that our brain has been developed over, you know, over time, over the whole of humanity, to recognize and to monitor our behavior. And so the real challenge is stopping and thinking before you push send or before you upload something while workplace bullying is sometimes hard to define, the negative ramifications of bullying at the workplace are fairly obvious. If it's not addressed, first the individual who's on the receiving end of it becomes very stressed, very anxious, very vigilant, and that affects his or her well-being in very deep ways that we're just beginning to figure out, not just in terms of their productivity, but also in terms of of their stress response and their body's reaction to stress, which is constant stress undermines health. Mm -hmm. It also shapes uh, people's willingness to come to work and people's willingness to risk at work and try hard and be motivated. So absenteeism is really prevalent among those who are victimized. Furthermore, a uh, recent study showed that the majority of people who quit their jobs quit because of a situation such as bullying where they they felt 
there was no way of escaping the bullying or harassment that occurred. And it takes a great length of time to train people, and companies invest in this to a great extent. And so losing losing employees it has a great cost to a company. So what can employers do to minimize bullying at the workplace? Well, I think the first thing that employers can do is take a close look at themselves because whether it's in school or the workplace or the family, those who are in leadership positions set the tone and set the expectations for behavior. And if it's respectful, caring behavior, then that's what people will understand is expected. If, on the other hand, it's bullying behavior or aggressive behavior, people will go into a defensive mode and also feel that that's the way to interact, the way to solve problems. So it starts with self-awareness of those who are in leadership. Furthermore, it starts with establishing policies and clearly laying out expectations for the type of behavior that is acceptable and welcomed at the workplace. In order to keep positive energy and creativity flowing, there must be a system of accountability and a responsive system of reporting issues within the workplace without negative ramifications. A well-running HR department is essential in this case. Anastasia Jogol for HR Reporter.